Mike Motorworks, and I'm the inventor of the electric small block Chevy. And I put the first one in my grandfather's 36 Hayes, and I took three cars to SEMA this year. I won three of the top 10 media awards. But while I was at SEMA, I came across Ford's Illuminator. This is a new Illuminator, uh, 9.1 gear ratio. Here's the part I like, $3,900. Now, I don't know if they're gonna uh, go into production fairly soon, but uh, I do quite like this unit. Of course, it'd be a lot of work to get it uh, in your car, but maybe that's gonna come. Now, you might say, what did this clown know about EVs and, and that type of thing, you know, but I'll tell you, uh, I got a little bit of pull in the industry. And as a matter of fact, I reached out to Ford Racing. Oh, I forgot my knife. One moment, please. Here we go. So I reached out to Ford Racing and, you know, it's really hard to get one of these Illuminator motors. I don't know of anyone who's got one. And because I've got so much pull on the industry, the, uh, they sent me this um, here, I'm letter here. Uh, Dear Mr. Webb, as we are presently sold out of all stock of the Illuminator, please accept this mock-up our engineers came up with so you can complete your video. Thank you for the maple syrup and mounted police bobblehead. Cheers, Ford Racing Team. Okay, well, huh, this is uh, not quite what I expected, but I guess it's uh, yeah, kind of nice. All right, well, let's use this as a mock-up, and I'll explain what they've got. So I gotta tell you, when I saw the Illuminator sitting on the stand there at the SEMA showcase, I was very excited, 3,900 bucks. Are you kidding me? That's a good price. Now, you don't get batteries, controllers, all the other stuff, and hey guys, you're not gonna get a hot rod for $3,900. That's not gonna happen. But this is a transaxle. It's got a nine to one gear ratio. It's got the motor and it goes in the rear end in the back of your car. So in my prototype here, this is the Cyber Beast. I've actually got the motor and a two to one gear reduction. So the other thing with these units now, you know, the average guy, you give them one of these, they get it 3,900 bucks. And like I say, you gotta buy all these parts, but now you gotta get it in your back of your car. Now, height makes an independent rear suspension. You know, you can pull the pot out and somehow adapt this, And but you know, I'm not an engineer. But that's what Ford has to do. They can't just sell us this unit like this. They have to install it in an independent rear suspension. Either it's a suspension they get out of their Mustang or for aftermarket companies that they can bolt these in, you know, or else make it uh, like my Cyber Beast there, where it's got, instead of a transaxle, it's got a two to one gear reduction. You put it at the front of your car in the motor compartment and you run a drive shaft or run it through a four speed. Like uh, that's what my Hayes there, um, it's running a four speed transmission. So uh, that's, you know, that's one of the other problems. Another problem is, can you get these? As you see, I got the clout and look what I got. It almost looks like a garbage can. I don't know. Maybe they were just tricking me, you know, trying to be, trying to have fun with me. I don't know. I went to SEMA there and the first day of SEMA when I saw these, I signed up for one of these motors. Sold out. And, you know, any of the media coverage of that, oh yeah, the demand's great. Um, we're all sold out. And yeah, I don't really think they sold it. So yeah, they're, they're, they're not available now. And, and you know, I understand why. Um, I even checked out Summit Racing. Summit Racing had these on their website three months before Ford actually introduced it at SEMA. And I talked to the guys at um, Summit Racing. They're great guys down there. And they're like, yeah, you know what, Chris? Like, we're back ordered for eight months. Like, we can't get any. We haven't sold any. So, you know, it's, it's, you know, you want to call it smoke and mirrors, whatever. I, I don't, you know, it is what it is. It's just, they're not quite ready. Was it rushed to get this unit to SEMA? Yeah, I think it was. I think what happened was, you know, Chevrolet in 2018, they came out with their Copo Camaro and, uh, 2019, they had that 62 Chevy with their little, so-called crate motor and that and then they SEMA was shut down in 2000 but they had their blazer and then this year they had the uh, 57 chevy with their crate hey it's chris from web motor work i'm here in chevrolet we're checking out their 57 chevy as you guys know we got our 57 chevy with our v-12 in it 
um, check this out. Now this is awesome. Now it's a little different than what we're doing. This is more the modern version, and this is a great motor that GM has come up with. And uh, they've done a fantastic job. Very clean, very nice lines. Um, like I say, totally different than us, but man, it's really, that's telling you, when, when GM's getting into this type of stuff, this stuff's going somewhere. GM isn't selling any crate motors. You know, it's like, oh yeah, we're gonna have these crate motors, $39,000, you know, great batteries and everything. Well, you look on their website, you type it in, you know what comes up? It comes up with a beautiful gas motor, which I really like actually. But they, yeah, they don't have these great motors done yet. So, yeah, I think uh, I think Ford kind of grabbed Illuminator Motors um, off the shelf, put it in that nice, I think it's a 68 Ford truck there. And, you know, they kind of plunked this on a stand at SEMA with a price tag of $3,900. You know, hey, great. But... The reality of it, no, it's it's not really quite ready yet. You know, it's kind of interesting, but Ford doesn't actually make these motors and transaxles. They're made by Borg Warner, and they're the same company that actually makes my motors for my prototypes. So I believe it's the same inner core. They have a different housing, of course, because they have the transaxle. But essentially, you know, it's the same same thing. But you know, they're buying hundreds of thousands of these. And the reasons they're buying so many of them is they're the same motor that they're using in their Mach-E. That's the new Mustang. So once again, the buying power, you know, and uh, it's the analogy, you know, I'm building two or three prototypes. They cost probably a hundred grand or more. Well, I know they cost more than a hundred grand per unit to get to SEMA. That's not counting the cars. And it's kind of like the analogy yeah, man, I'm going to build my own toaster. You know, go in your basement and you buy these wires and a plug and some metal and, you know, some type of mechanism to make a lift up and down and you're spending <laughs> all this money and all this time. You know, you walk down to Walmart, it's like, yeah, here's $12. Wow, that toaster is a beauty, you know. So, yeah, that's, that's the way it, that's just the way it is. You know, I get excited about thinking if we can get those guys involved and get the prices down for the average guy to make these hot rods, it's phenomenal. And you know, when you think of it, building a brand new car, is that environmentally friendly? Not really. You got an old rig like this and you put an electric motor in it, you're updating it and it, it's way more environmentally friendly because you, it's already built. You're not crushing this thing and building a new fancy car. Ford's not quite ready to sell me these motors and controllers, obviously. So what am I going to do? I got a great idea. You can buy one of these Ford Mustangs, $43,000. Doors, cigarette lighters. Actually, I actually don't think they have cigarette lighters these days, but you know what I mean? The complete car for $43,000. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna pull all the components out of it, like the motors, electric motor, and the rear end, and the, the controllers, and all the batteries, and then I'm gonna put a gas motor back in it, just like my buddy Rich from Rich Rebuilds did to a Tesla. Actually, here's a little video clip, him and I pissing around at SEMA, having some fun. So Rich was telling, he was checking out my electric car, so he's gonna show me his electric Tesla here. Yeah, it's electric so Tesla, what do you think about this? I'm thinking, uh, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, hey, different. check this out. Look at this. So, what is it? What are you got in so, here, man? So you know how you have your company where you take the motor <laughs> and you put it over <laughs> all the bags of electronics? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. well, my company has the most realistic looking engines what the known hell? to man. It, it looks like a real LS it looks motor, like a but real, it's electric. It looks like a real You're LS. brilliant. You're smarter than I am, It looks like a real Rich. LS. See, I know. Oh, my I, God. I, I, Unbelievable! Gonna, that you're gonna, you're awesome. Go, you'll get there. This level of detail you haven't reached you're so yet. You're so smart, man. But you'll get there. Look at this. All these, all these. Look at that, dude. The fuel That's rail. That's fancy looking. That looks like it a looks real like fuel a real rail. Fuel line. But it's not. No, yes. I can see that. It's yeah, obviously plug, electric. All, all Fake plugs, spark plugs. plugs. Look at this. I have, look, the headers. Yeah. You know how you fake have your, headers. Fake yeah. head, it's all fake. Oh my God, man. Not bad. So where's the real electric motor? Inside or behind? No, it's inside of it. Inside so here, we, you got an electric motor. Out. Yes. Awesome, exactly. man. I, I thought I was brilliant. You, man, you you're feel, the, you're you the smartest silly man now, in town. You? I you feel, feel really silly. silly. Guess what? I don't have my name all over everything. Can I put my name on it? You can do whatever you want. All right, I, yep. I, I went and put my name on it because yep. you stole, I, like, I got patents on this. I'm going to sue your goddamn ass. I'm going to give you a pencil. You're getting right. sued. You can't put a goddamn electric motor <laughs> in a small block Chevy right. without talking to me. You understand I'm, me? I'm talking to you now. Are you are thing. you talking? You're listening to me. <laughs> I, <laughs> are you listening to me, man? I, I can't hear you through your mask on. 
I don't want to kiss you. Why? What's wrong with me? Everything's wrong with you. <laughs> I've never been sort of insulted in the last 10 minutes as much like oh, I'm leaving. <laughs> that was perfect, man. There you go. But hey, you know what? That's a lot of work to put a gas tank in it and put a gas motor in it. Yeah, what are you going to sell the thing for? So I got a few other ways to repurpose these things. So what I'm thinking is, hey, you know what? How about an executive desk? Or you could use shelf space or that old chestnut, the car couch. And look at these two crowd pleasers selling for fifteen to eighteen thousand dollars. The booth set for the diner, or better yet, a custom pool table. You know. So I'm probably being silly. I mean, nobody wants a flower basket or, or a, a barbecue made out of a Ford Mustang. That's not really realistic, is it? Um, and and then, you know. You got all these Mustang hot tubs or whatever, although that, that's not very uh, feasible. It's not environmentally friendly. So what we got to do is we got to get Tesla, Ford, Chev, and just make the kits. Don't make us have to rip them out of your car. That's not that's not the way to do it, man. There is a huge, huge potential. Uh, you know, I mean these these motors and these things like this old rig here, five thousand pounds, and it burns the wheels off, you know, burns the rubber off. <laughs> you know, it's only 125 horsepower, but it's a torque, you know, it's got that immediate torque that makes it work. So, you know, I got a passion for these electric motors. I just love driving my Hayes Rat Rod there with the electric motor in it. And there's lots of guys out there with the classic cars, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a classic car. It can be a 96 Ford pickup truck with the, the old mortar is starting to wear out or whatever. If the government got involved in this and maybe gave an $8,000 incentive for anybody who's willing to take one of these crate motors and put it into an existing gas motored car, it, it's a win-win situation for everybody. You're not manufacturing new cars. You're not sending these things to the crushers and, and dumping them and then recycling them into a, a more modern car again. It just really doesn't make sense. And, you know, let's get on the bandwagon here. Let's, uh, hey, Joe Biden, I mean, he's got a 67 uh, Corvette there. Let's put this small block Chevy in it. I mean, it'll look stock for him. Um, I tried getting a hold of him in the White House. He hasn't returned my calls. So if the CIA is watching, you know, pass this on. Get him to give me a call, man. And Ford and Chevy, like, hey, you know, I know I have the patents on this, but like I'm willing to work something out with you guys. You want a 427? This is a real nice Boss 427. That would look good in one of your SEMA cars, man. And Chevy, I know this would look good in that 57 Chev that you guys did. If this thing was sitting in, oh man, it, people would have just loved that. So let's everybody share our technology. Let's all get on board. Let's make this work. Let's start converting these old gas guzzler cars into electric. And, you know, I think it can be done and I think it can be fun. And it's going to take time. I mean, even if it's not done in my lifetime, as you see, I'm a pretty old guy. But for my daughters, by the time, you know, they got these crate motors ready, they'll be able to put one in their flying car or whatever. I don't know. But uh, listen, thanks a lot for listening to me babble on here. Um, those of you who fell asleep, uh, well, wakey, wakey. All right. Talk to you later.